Hi everyone and welcome back to Making Magical Adventures. My name is Nicole and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get those delicious beignets that you get inside the park, so keep on watching. So while you're at the park, I'm sure you have all smelled the delicious smell coming from New Orleans Square, and that can only be explained by one thing, which is going to be the Café du Mont beignets that are served at the park. Now around the holiday season, I know that they have served limited edition beignets such as a pumpkin spice or a peppermint bark. Just make sure that when you're there for that seasonal time, that you really go take up their offer on their seasonal beignets. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make just the original powdered sugar or a cinnamon sugar beignet and this will be available for you to do at home so let's get right into it so this beignet mix that i was showing you guys you are actually able to purchase that at the park they do provide it at the jazz kitchen cafe that's in downtown disney unfortunately we didn't pick it up the last time that we were there because we had seen it at some grocery stores so when we got back home, unfortunately we weren't able to find it at our local grocery store. So we did have to purchase ours on Amazon and unfortunately through Amazon it was only a bundle package with their coffee. So it came out a lot more expensive than what we've seen at the stores such as Walmart and Target where you can find them. And they run you about $4 for a box. So just kind of keep an eye out when you're looking for the dough mix so that you're not having to run into the same situation as us. I would just recommend to pick it up at the park while you're there. Okay, so let me run you down the list of everything that you're gonna need to make this, the beignets. What you'll need is a good instrument to be retracting the beignets once you've tossed them into your hot oil pot. Um, this is just like a wok ladle that I was able to find at my grocery store. You are able to do tongs. I personally don't like to do tongs so that it doesn't puncture the beignets because they are very delicate. So you'll need um, a wok ladle, a big pot that can hold enough oil, and we're going to use about this whole bottle of canola oil because you want it to be fairly full so that your beignets are submerged in the oil so that way they're getting fried all around. You'll also need your beignet mix. You'll need some powdered sugar to go ahead and dust those bad boys off. Some water for mixing. And then we will be having to roll out the dough. So you want to make sure that you have some flour on hand, your mixing bowl. You want to have your rolling pin to roll the dough out and a measuring cup. And then these little cookie cutter outlines. We actually purchased these on Amazon for about $5 and they come like in a pack of five or so in various sizes. They're very cute and super easy to use. We'll make sure to put the link down below for these little cookie cutters. So this recipe calls for two cups of this beignet mix. So let me go ahead and pour that right into my measuring cup. Alright, let's go to our second cup. And for all you bakers, yes, I know you want to have this nice and packed tight. You don't want to have any air bubbles. Oops. So just flying that down. There's our second cup. Alright, and this is how easy the beignet mix. Everything that's needed is already inside the mix. And then all we have to do is add 7 fluid ounces of water. So let me go ahead and measure that out here. What we're going to do next is slowly add the water into the beignet mix and give it a stir. And you keep mixing this until it becomes a really thick dough. As you can see, that's starting to happen. Let me add the rest of that. All right, as you guys can see, we got our dough that's forming here. It's kind of starting to get really firm and hard to maneuver. So that lets me know that it's time to start getting it transferred over to our countertop. Um, so let me show you how to do that. We're gonna put that aside here. You're gonna reach into your flour bag and just grab a good handful and just dust it onto your countertop. And this is gonna help so that it doesn't get stuck. To the top of this. What we'll do too is we'll get our rolling pin. We're going to dust that as well. And 
then you're just gonna scrape this bad boy onto your countertop. And this is a fun activity that you can do with your kids. I know kids are always wanting to get into the kitchen. So this would be a good way to get them involved. And it's a good exercise on the arm. So if you, the parent, don't have to do it, I would make the kids do it. Make sure you have some flowers on your hand so that it's not sticking too much to your fingertips. So I went ahead and mixed that dough really well with that flour so that it wasn't like as tacky. You're gonna go ahead and get your rolling pin and you're gonna gently start to roll this dough out. And this is like a really light and fluffy dough. I really like it. So we'll just roll it out and give it a twist. Flour's your friend here, so don't be scared to use it. And we'll just roll this out. You do not want your beignets to be too thin nor too thick because that'll make it really tricky in the cooking process. So I would say, what is this, like a quarter inch thick? Yeah, about a quarter inch okay. thick. Okay. I'm pretty happy with the sizing. I'm not worried about this right here because we'll, we'll fold it in and use it again. But this is a good size right here. So what you want to do here is you're going to pick up your cookie cutter and just press it down in the dough and give it a good shimmy. See how well that works? Yay! It's working. Now the tricky part is just lifting it because like I said, it's so soft. It survived. And this is what I mean by flour is your friend because I don't want it getting stuck on the countertop. Um, yeah, you see? That's still not ready, so let me go ahead and add a little bit more flour here. All right, I'm giving this a second shot. You know, life likes to throw us curveballs, but that doesn't mean we quit, so let's see if it works. As you can see, like I loaded it up with flour around myself here because I want to make sure that I can get the shape that I'm going for. It worked, do you see? You just gotta be patient with this. So we'll just set those off to the side. Go ahead and give that a good push. Kind of pinch it. Tear around the side of the dough. Now, I don't work at Disney, so I'm gonna do my best to try to make these perfect, but they have it down to the science. I'm just praying mine still keep their shape at the end of all this. So there's that Mickey, and then let's go ahead and lift it. And it lifts right up right away. So we picked up these really cute cookie cutter shapes out from Daiso, which is that store that we've told you before in our past videos. So I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and make Henry a little alien beignet since he loves Toy Story. So hopefully this works. Hopefully it's not a flop. So let's give it a shot here. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> if it'll actually maintain when we put in the oil. These things are really cool, guys. If you guys have a Daiso store next to you, or ever come across one, our uh, advice would be definitely to go try it. It just doesn't have the little ball. That's the only part that's getting pinched, but I mean, you get the point, right? All right, let's see if it'll work with the big body. All right, let's give this one a chance. Maybe I should like pull that apart so it doesn't mess up the antenna. Oh. You can see him. I'm really trying. He survived. I'll probably just make you these two because it was pretty tricky. That's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> so when Nicole was talking about that Daiso store, we actually got these really cool like paper bags. Once the beignets are done, we're gonna go ahead and put the beignets in there. We'll add the powdered sugar and we'll shake them up. And then right here, we got this really neat platter as well. It's got Mickey Mouse on it. So we just got our final beignet. 
And if you guys don't know what a beignet is, all it is, it's a French donut that became really popular in New Orleans. I'm assuming it's from when, you know, European people were coming over here to the States. So yeah, it's just a donut. It's really good. Man, talk about a cleanup. I had to go ahead and get my area all cleaned up before it gets like cemented onto the countertop. So moving on forward, once you cut all those beignets, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna grab your, I prefer to use canola oil. That's just kind of what I've seen in uh, the previous recipes that I've done. So you're gonna get your canola oil. And like I said, you wanna make sure that your pot that you're using is almost like half or if not all the way full so that your beignets can go ahead and be submerged in the oil and fry properly. All right, so let's go ahead and dunk that into the pot. So the best setting that I find that works for the beignets and heating the oil is to keep it in between the six and the eight, so roughly a seven medium high. So we're gonna go ahead and let that heat up, so let's just sit here and wait. So I talked about the importance of making sure that your oil is hot in our last video. Let's go ahead and check this out and see if our oil is ready. If not, I'll demonstrate what I mean by it just sinking to the bottom. So let's gently and watch your fingers as you do this. So as you can see, our dough is not floating. It's taking quite a while. So if our oil was hot enough and ready, that beignet dough, the second you throw in, it does dunk, but it immediately pops up. As you can see here, this one's still taking a while. Um, it's fine to leave your beignet mix in there if that's the occasion, but that's why you always want to start off with one piece of dough and not dunk all your um, beignets in there because then that's what happens. And then they're just like, you'll see what I mean, they'll come out really weird. Let's just wait for this little guy to pop up. The second it pops up, I can start getting the other ones ready. So as you can see here, we're getting a little of that bubbling action happening. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm flipping it occasionally so that that one side isn't burning. So we're gonna flip it over. And like I said, you'll see what I mean by throwing it into the oil when it's not ready. It doesn't get the proper form. It doesn't puff up the way we want it to. Um, it'll be kind of like puffed on one side and then flat on the other. I'm about to get this one out here in a few minutes and all those bubbles, I mean, that's a good indication that our oil's like almost ready. So we'll be ready to fry up the other ones here in a minute. So I just scooped up our beignet here. Um, and what we see here is this side is very flat. On the other side, it is puffed out a little bit, but that's not the look that we're going for. So I'm gonna make another one here of the Mickey Mouse shape so that we can compare it. I'm just gonna set it here on the paper towels in the meantime so that it starts to take out some of that extra oil. What I learned to do with beignets, what I personally do, is I just lay it down on the wok here, and then I just dunk it and release. And as you see, I released it into the oil. It's submerged in the oil, and right now it'll start to jump up. That lets me know that the oil is at the right temperature here. And you only want to do one or two beignets at a time. You don't want to be doing multiple beignets because then it's hard to keep track of them and the flipping process. And just be super careful with the oil. You are working with hot oil. I wanna make sure that this doesn't jump or cause anybody any harm. And I do not recommend this for children to be doing. And then also with that, the oil is gonna be hot. There is portions of the beignet mix that fall to the bottom and continue to burn in the oil. So you will see a lot of smoke. Make sure that you have your cans turned on in your kitchen and to have a window open. Let's take a look in the pot. You see how in this one, they're puffed up a little bit more, that's what we want. So let me flip it so that the other side gets golden brown. Oh. <laughs> this one's ear is weird, do you see that? It looks like the alien ear got attached to it. I don't know. Or the happened. alien ball thing. Like I said, we're not working at Disney. These, this is as close to perfect as they're getting. Oh, this one's really, that one right there. That is one's really pretty, cool. pretty yeah. good. I think they look perfect for what, you know, what we did. <laughs> It's the um, transporting them into the oil that distorts the shape a little bit. All right, we're gonna fish this one out. And you just give it a little shake so any oil comes out. And you're looking for that golden brown color. That's how you know that it's finished. So just go ahead and transfer that over. Now, 
as you can see here, like I said, I was gonna compare the two. This one is not puffy, it's very flat, it's not golden, compared to this one. You see the difference? So that's how you know the difference of when your oil's ready and when it's not. So. Not too shabby. And I just make sure that all the oil kind of gets off. And into the tray. Now I'm gonna continue to cook the rest of these and then our next step is to sugar dust them and then we're almost done. Um, you just dump them in the oil and they're supposed to be in there for about 8 to 10 seconds. It's a very quick process. You just want to make sure that while you're doing this, you're keeping an eye on this. They can burn pretty quickly, so just make sure you're monitoring your banana mix. I can't stress enough the importance of just making sure you're monitoring this because everything got really, really hot. Towards the end of our last beignets, I made sure to turn off the oil because you don't want to leave that on. So towards the end of the last beignets, I turn off the um, the stove top and I just move the pot back from the handles and that was even pretty hot. So just be very, very careful um, when you're doing this step. And if you want to take a look in here, um, as you're doing the beignets, like I said, what starts to happen is some of that dough starts to fall off and then it just sinks to the bottom of the pot and that's what creates that burning sensation. So just be very, very quick with the process and be very careful too. So let's move that off here. All our beignets are finished, so that moves us on to our next step. All right, so once you've completed making all your beignets, what you're gonna do is you want to get a paper bag, and like Henry said, we purchased these at Daiso. They're so cute, like how could you not get these? Um, but you wanna make sure that it's a paper bag. The reason being is the paper bag material absorbs some of that extra oil that does not need to be in the beignets. That'll make sure that it's not just sitting in its own oils. You'll get your paper bag, you'll get your best looking beignets, and you'll dump them in here. And I don't know what happened to ours. They just got like a little puffy and funky shape, but we'll throw three in a bag for now. And then the next step is your choice of toppings. Now the two convenient things that you probably have at home is one, powdered sugar, or two, cinnamon and granulated sugar. Um, the traditional beignet mix is the powdered sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in this bag here. And you're just gonna sprinkle it straight into the bag. And there's no measurement of how much goes in there. It really just depends on how much you like sugar. So you just add that in there. You give this a fold up top. And then the fun part, you give it a shake. And that'll make sure that the powdered sugar is all over the beignet. I know Henry loves this stuff, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, that's the one mistake is after you shake it, give it a little bit for that sugar to settle because if not, it just goes in your face. But anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this bad boy a test. Isn't that beautiful? How does it taste? Mm. Really good. I feel like I'm at the part. This is really, really good. I was just saying to Henry that the um, outline that they use at the park has to be like 10 times bigger than the one we're using because I thought that was big, but then once you find them, they actually are miniature. So um, this is a really good treat. All right guys, so this is the end result. We have our powdered sugar and then we have our cinnamon sugar over here. Now, they're not the most beautiful, but that's why it's DIY. And like this plate says, go for it. So we're gonna pick out on these right now because they're too delicious to pass up. So let me set this down here. All right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. 
Make sure you leave some comments down below if you guys are going to try this recipe out or if you have already made beignets at home before, we would love to know. And then if you guys have any topping suggestions, we'd love to hear that too. Make sure you share this video with a friend. That way they can get on board with all the great snacks that we're going to be making. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so you can get notified when we're dropping a new video. With all that being said, may you always have a magical adventure.